In this final part, we'll create a method to search user by its ID. So, let's do it. First of all, we need to create another floating action button. For that we need a column widget to place both floating action button inside it vertically. Now, use hero tag property of to let the app differentiate between both floating action buttons. It acts like unique key. Use sized box to give some space between both buttons. Set column main axis alignment to end. Delete this code from first button. Set its icon to search icon. Now create a file named find user. Create stateful widget inside this file. Call this widget find user. Create scaffold widget. Now, first of all, we need an empty constructor of our model class to create an empty user object. Because we need to find user and then store its data in that object. But default constructor does not let us create empty user object because we need to provide user data while creating the object. So, to solve this problem, we need to create a named constructor which will act as empty constructor. So, let's create a named constructor. Use const, class name which is user. Now put a dot and add named constructor name here. Inside this constructor, set user ID to 0. And pass empty strings to both name and address properties. Now open find user page. Create instance of API handler class. Create a user object. As you can see while using default constructor, we need to pass all this data which we don't have right now. So, we'll use named constructor. Copy app bar and bottom navigation button from the main page and paste it here. Set on press property empty right now. Change title to find user. Change button text to find. Go to main page and use navigator.push method to redirect to find user page. Create body, and pass column widget to it. Wrap column widget with padding, and give some padding. Inside the column create a text field. Create a text editing controller. Pass this controller to this text field. Add size box to add some spacing. Now, add a list tile. Add leading property. Show user ID here using text widget. Add title, and show username here. Now add subtitle, and show user address in it. Create a method of void return type, and name it find user. Pass user ID as a parameter. Now open API handler class. Create a method of return type future user object. Call it get user by ID. It requires user ID as a parameter. Make it async method. Copy this code from get user method and paste it here. 
add catch block to remove the errors. Create a nullable user property. Use user instead of data. Remove this line. Also remove the list and make it map data type. And here, use from JSON method and pass user it the JSON data. Return user in catch block. Use exclamation mark as this property is nullable. Also return user here. Create user property, call get user by ID method from API handler class. Make this method async. Also use set state method to refresh widget tree. Let's test it out. First of all, add users. User IDs of these users are 6 and 7. Right now, we are not validating input data in text field. So, we'll use these user IDs to test. First, pass this method to onPress property of find button. Use text editing controller to pass the value of text field to this method. As text value is of string data type, use int parse method to convert string into int data type. Let's try it out now. There's an exception. We need to pass user ID along with base URI to find the user by its ID. Let's test it out. It's working. And with that, this tutorial comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe our channel. I'll see you in upcoming videos.